Hello everyone and welcome to the Trimming Hedges channel. Today I'm going to be going over a video about my five reasons as to why I will be focusing my collection on vintage baseball cards and memorabilia for 2024 and going forward. But especially in 2024, I'm going to be um, letting go of some other pieces that don't fit that focus and making sure that I uh, make lists and all these kinds of things to make sure that I keep my focus for that. Um, I have five big reasons for me. These may be the same for you. I don't know. In the video, please enjoy my wonderful background. <laughs> There's nothing there because we just moved and I don't, I haven't gotten to put anything up. I have a few things in front of the camera, um, which I have some sh showed in some other videos, but I don't have anything behind me yet. So that will be changing, but please enjoy. One of my dogs could walk through. Anyway, so these could be five important reasons for you and or they could not be who knows but these will be mine and why i kind of suggest it as well to be honest with you um, for other people so the first one is because when you when you look if you're a big baseball fan in general you have to you know enjoy the history of baseball because it's important and especially for baseball with stats and everything like that 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 everybody loves it's important for baseball and you can just see it in the cards. So this card is really important to, to my baseball history, um, but just in general. So this is the 58 uh, Roger Maris rookie card. Okay, this one's real beat up. So you can just kind of, when you're looking at it and when you feel it, you can just see and feel that this card is as old as it is and feel the history in this card, okay? Um, even as old and beat up as it is, it, it's just amazing to me how it feels. So I put it back in the top loader here. Um, but I grabbed this one recently at a show, and it was just awesome to be able to do that, especially for such a low price. So I know that this card's really beat up, but I got it for like 30 bucks, and it's just an amazing piece of history. So, and, some, and the newer cards that are releasing now are also obviously going to have history and going to be a part of history. Because that's how that works. Um, but but these old cards from 58 are already as old as they are. Um, it's already almost, what, 70 years old. So to be able to have something like this, um, people enjoy having objects that are 70 years old in general, let alone of their favorite baseball player or an amazing person of history. So And, and Roger Maris is a very important part of baseball history, and so is this card. So... I just think that that's a really cool thing. I don't get the same feeling, you know, yet when I'm buying a, a modern card, it's just not the same. Um, Mike Trout, for instance, I'll take this card. I enjoy these modern cards, um, but like this one just doesn't give me, no, this is a cool deck of card, but this one just doesn't give me the same feeling, you know, it just doesn't. So, and if you have gone through some refocuses to your collection, you understand what I'm talking about. To where you buy it, oh, that's cool. This was fun. And then you move on and you shove the card away and you don't really care to look at it. But with the history of baseball, I want to look at these cards and I'm going to be putting them up so that I can see them. Uh, number two, it's nice to me that there's different eras of cards. So as of right now, and people have different opinions. Vintage cards are anything before 1980. And of course, as we move forward in the years, that is going to change. But um, it's anything before 1980. There's also pre-World War II. So when people refer to pre-war, they're talking about World War II, which was a different, kind of a different era of cards. Um, they were made different and there's some really cool options. So you can go check those out. But there's also um, just different eras. So we have the vintage cards. So we have, like I said, the 58 Maris, which is a vintage card. And then we also go to the junk wax era, which here's an example. Here's a Chipper Jones card from 1991. So this to the junk wax era to me is not really, it's not vintage, obviously. But it's a, it's a cool era. Um, it's what I grew up with because I was born in 88. So I got this really nice era of Junk's Wax cards where it's just nuts. There's so many of them. There wasn't really any chases. There's just a ton of the chipper rookie cards out there. So they're not worth a whole lot, and that's okay. Um, but it gives you some options. And if you go through the years, you know, 
1930s cards, the, the T206 cards, the 48 Bowman that's black and white and smaller that I don't have any of yet, but I plan on getting a few. Back into the 50s, the, the 58, then you have a 64 uh, Maris, this one that I recently got as well. Sorry with the glare. But this is a, a 64 Maris. And it's nice also because you can get a card, this is a seven. So this is gonna have really nice corners and it'd be in really good shape. And then you have the Maris rookie card that's all beat up, but you can still see it, you know, and you understand what card it is. So I really enjoy that as well. I grabbed a whole bunch um, at a recent card show and I made a video about the Maris cards that I got. Um, and you can see just, you know, the different, the different examples of their condition. Um, you can get some for a lot cheaper. Like I said, that Maris was 30 bucks. And then the Maris that I got that was graded, that was a five, was $250, which was still actually a really good deal, in my opinion. So it's nice to kind of look around and, and, and see. Um, another reason, reason number three, is because prices are coming down. And they're coming down across the board. But one really cool thing about vintage, in my opinion, is that it's not like falling from the sky, like in a lot of other like newer cards to where cards that were worth thousands of dollars a while ago are now worth nowhere near that. Now there are the vintage cards that have done that, but as for instance, as an example, uh, I sold about six months ago, a little bit more than that, a uh, Mickey Mantle card, and I went to look up to, to buy it again. I sold that to get something else, uh, but I went to go to buy another one and it was the same price I sold it for. So one cool thing about vintage is in a, in a lot of ways, that's not, in my opinion, gonna drastically fall because I have some opinions about the new modern cards that they are just not gonna stay anywhere near people think they are. And I'm not an old guy. I maybe not be 20 anymore, but that's just not gonna happen. That's a different video. <laughs> that I could go on for a long time about, but it's really nice that that the value is there. Now for vintage cards, a lot of us like, honestly, for modern stuff, I cared a lot more about the value and these vintage ones, I really don't. Now I care that my money's not being wasted, like that I bought something and then all of a sudden it's way down in value and I basically overpaid in a way of where I could have gotten it for less, if that makes sense but I don't really care as much of the value, but also the value staying there. I really just don't think that these are gonna go down. And then in another 30 years, when these cards are 100 years old, these cards are gonna be 100 years old and all the new modern stuff is gonna be nowhere near that. So I just think, you know, in my lifetime, the vintage cards are gonna hold their value a lot more than the new modern stuff. Cause we don't know what's gonna happen with that. You can look, history repeats itself, that is for sure. So we're gonna see that with the card market at some point. Um, we just don't know to what extent. So just keep that in mind. The fourth reason is graded versus not graded. And I kind of mentioned that before, whereas you can pick up, you know, the, the really messed up, probably, gonna grade a one would be below that if it could, Roger Maris versus a seven. And the price difference is crazy. Um, comparing that to modern, it's for some reason really stupid that a nine is worth half of what a 10 is where they're all just literally just pulled out of the pack and they look the same. But, <laughs> but it's nice because you can buy something that still looks really nice and isn't graded. Um, for a fraction of what a graded card will go for. Um, whether it's destroyed versus something that is that if you graded it would be a seven, and that's kind of similar to modern or wax or, or different eras where, you know, it, usually if you buy it not graded, it's going to be less. But it's just cool that you have the option to get a really nice looking like one or two, PSA, SGC, one or two, um, and not have to pay anywhere near what the five would be, and the card still looks really nice to you. But maybe on the back it's messed up or it's not as centered or something like that. But because you have that option, I think that's really nice. And it just kind of gives you some wiggle room. So like I have a few other cards, like the Maris rookie card I got that's a five. 
was in my price range to where I don't really need the eight right now. I can upgrade to it at some point, but I don't need it right now. Um, I'm looking at some older Pee Wee Reese cards as well as Warren Spawn, or if I want to get, you know, some other Mickey Mantle cards, I could go for something that isn't graded as high or not graded at all. I could get a two or a three instead of having to get a six or a seven. Um, I just think that's a really nice option and, and lets people kind of slowly get into the hobby because you don't need, even though people are making videos showing that they have these crazy collections of this, you know, PSA 8 Mickey Mantle that's worth thousands of dollars, not all of us can afford that. And that's okay. So most people watching this video are not going to be able to afford that. So you can go and get yourself a two, you know, for a couple hundred bucks, and it's still going to look nice, especially when you grade it. So that's my spiel on that. <laughs> Number five is going to be, if you're buying vintage cards, you're not going to waste your money on opening cards, on opening packs, on opening boxes, on buying into breaks. Now, you might do it every once in a while for fun, which I will probably be doing. If there's a cool set I enjoy, like Allen and Ginter, I'll probably get a box or two of it. Um, <clears throat> one day when I make more money, maybe a case. So just to enjoy it, or I do like the platinum set because it kind of looks a little more vintage. But odds are you are not going to be throwing money away opening packs because you can't get your vintage cards in the packs. I can't pull a 64 Roger Maris in a modern pack. That's just not going to happen. Now you could, in the Panini stuff, get like a game used piece um, or an autograph, like a cut autograph, or even some of the guys that are still alive are signing cards. But you, you don't have to do that. And especially if you're buying vintage, the modern stuff of the old guys is not considered vintage. So it just depends on what you want to collect. But personally, that's really going to help me out. Because before I was like, well, let me get into some breaks um, and basically lose a whole lot of money to where, for instance, if I have this Maris card and I want to upgrade it or, you know, trade it to somebody for something else or sell it to buy something else, even if I lose a few dollars on it, it is nothing compared to opening packs. And you can do that with modern as well. And, you know, just by buying singles, people say, well, just buy singles. But if you're buying modern singles, I would bet a whole lot of my money that you're going to be at some point opening a lot more packs because it's, it's really hard not to when you're in this hobby. No matter how many singles you buy, it's still really tempting to go buy a box, which like I said, I will still be doing that at some point for like the Alan Ginter set or ones I really, really, really like just for fun um, that have cards that I enjoy. So... But that's not like a focus, that's just, I know a certain time of the year I'll put a few dollars aside to be able to do that. So that was my five reasons. Uh, let's go through them one more time. So history of baseball, number one, I think. Personally for me, it's awesome just to categorize everything and to learn a lot. Some of these guys have some awesome channels that have that no history of the players and the teams. And it's gotten... It's, it's told me to go back and to look into the history of my family, who a few people played uh, professional baseball, and to look into that and enjoy that. Um, so that is just awesome to me. Number two is that there's a large variety. There's a big difference in, I mean, different sets cost, you know, different amounts of money, but there's a big uh, year range where you can purchase things from. Number three is that the prices are coming down, but with vintage, personally, I think your money's a little bit safer if you're worried about that. Um, some of us are buying these cards to enjoy now, to pass down to family. Um, I would bet all my money that these older cards are gonna hold their value a lot more than the other ones. Um, number four, you can choose between graded and non-graded. Um, and number five, you are not gonna be as tempted to open boxes which is a key and a big one because when you throw down three hundred dollars for a box odds are nowadays you're going to get ten percent of your money so you're going to get a thirty dollar like couple autographs or something worth worth thirty bucks so um those are my reasons if you guys have questions or anything that you would like to discuss uh, please let me know down in the comments because i'd love to do like a weekly discussion video where i answer some questions 
um, or just talk about some something random if there's something you would like for me to discuss. I know I don't have a crazy collection yet, but I'll be updating you guys as I go through it. As I add some things, going to be doing some really cool videos, going to try to do some collaborations. So please look forward to those. If you enjoyed the video, uh, hit the like and subscribe. The background, I'll be working on it. Um, so I do some of my videos, you know, on the table, mainly for that because my background sucks right now. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.